the point of death. Then said Jesus unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. The nobleman said unto him, Sir, come down, ere my child die. Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. And as he was now going down, his servants met him, and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. Then required he of them the hour when he began to amend. And they said unto him, Yesterday at the seventh hour the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in the which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth, and himself believed, and his whole house. This is again the second miracle that Jesus did when he was come out of Judea into Galilee. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight, dear God, in your sight. And we ask, Heavenly Father, that you would strengthen us. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would open up the heart tonight, dear God, whether it would be a uh, uh, live stream or even tonight, Lord, in this sanctuary. We ask, dear God, that you would do the things that only you can do. And so, Lord, increase our faith. Help us, dear God, to be faithful until the end of this world. For it's in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. God bless you. Be seated, if you will. I want to say to you tonight that believers once filled the parking lots of local churches. It's because of having a topic of faith. Uh, having faith in God, it was once alive. And I remember coming to this church that uh, uh, you had to uh, rush to get in to get a seat. And, uh, and, and when you left, people were still sitting out in the parking lot talking. I, I've done it many times myself, sitting out there talking talking, talking. About what? About having faith in God. I want you to think about tonight that uh, God was once alive in the hearts and minds of his people. And I think that today, how admirable it is uh, that we don't just simply talk about the existence of God. Uh, it, you know, uh, when we talk about God, you have to believe in faith. Because it's not like you can go and get a telescope and you can look through the telescope and say, there he is. There's God. That's the one I'm talking about. See, none of us has never seen God. None of us really understand the biblical descriptions of what God is. We can go to the book of Revelation, and yes, we can say that his hair is like white as wool, and his eyes are a flaming fire, his feet are a brass, all because of biblical accounts that describe who God is. But we don't know what that image looks like. I think of tonight that uh, just as we experience the uh, existence of a computer and now today smartphones, amen, on what these smartphones can really do. But I think that today we can look into a smartphone and we can, uh, you ever looked at the smartphone not just by the color and, and the vigorous of, of how the screen moves back and forth, but hold it up in the sunlight. Turn it to the side and you can see that there's a lot of squares on the screen of the, uh, of the, uh, of the thing. And that is so that you can touch it. Amen. Uh, there's a lot of things that is receiving your fingerprints. A lot of things that uh, is designed to do something when you touch it. But yet how, fi how fascinating it is to be able to look at that, uh, that cell your phone, that, uh, that tablet or whatever, and, and, and how the design of it is and how it functions. You talk about the existence of God, uh, we must be able to look into the complexity, the beauty of this world, and we must say, just as well as the cellular phone, that hey, there was a, an intelligent mind that created this, and, and yet, but when you look into the world, you must see that there was an intelligent God. The Bible calls him the creator. Turn over me real quick, just real quick. We'll do a little Bible uh, drill here. But Genesis chapter 1, I want to show you some things that God has placed upon my heart just uh, not too long ago. But in a matter of time, I want, to, uh, I want you to get with me. I tell our church now, hey, if you run out of time, it's because you're not turning the Bible pages. Amen? And so, all right, and Genesis chapter 1. I want you to look with me. Uh, notice this. I, I, I love this verse of all the verses in the Bible. It helps me. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. That's lovely, isn't it? 
Let's move on to two other verses. I want to show you something. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. The fascinating thing that I want you to see tonight is where God, for the very first time, spoke about uh, anything before you can ever hear about God saying anything, before you can ever think about what God is and understanding. God spoke. And when he spoke, notice what he spoke. The Bible says in verse 3, And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. I want you to see that as we consider the complexities of the earth and, uh, and, and all this fascinating things, the flowers, the trees, the birds, and all that, how wonderful it is. But I want you to consider tonight that God spoke light into existence. Amen? What a tremendous thing that when you can look the prism of light and you can discover the beauty, the colors of what light brings. But yet, how was it, how was it developed? How was it developed? Well, you can go and look on your smartphone and you can look that your smartphone could have been developed by Apple, Samsung, or any other uh, uh, LG or any other carrier. But when you look at the God, when you look at his existence, you don't get any other definition of what the creator is except in his creations. And so as you see God here tonight, the Bible says... By faith, God said, let there uh, be light, and there was light. You know, I want you to see, according to verse 3 and 2, notice with me in verse 2, the Bible says, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. I want, you to, uh, I want you to look up here real quick, but I want you to consider this tonight. God saw it good that his creations was not in darkness. Amen? You with me? God wants there to be light on his creations. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute. Before you change the subject on me, I want you to consider this. As we see tonight that God wants there to be light on his creation, don't you think that he wants faith to be in his believers? Amen? And so as you consider this tonight, you must consider that faith is very important. Faith is much more than something, some description, some substance. Amen? Faith is why we live and exist. I've never seen God before, but I know he's real. And I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, one day I'm going to meet him face to face. I want to commend Brother Jesse today, sing, uh, 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 singing the songs, outlining. A lot of these songs that he, uh, he had planned out today were about the Creator. Even though we don't see God, we know that He is real, and yet as we consider His existence, we find that the Bible gives us an account of what it was like when people had faith. You think about Abraham and Sarah. Amen. And uh, Abraham and Sarah had a, uh, had a child uh, in their elderly age. Amen. Uh, in their uh, 75s, 80 years old. Amen. So uh, I hope y'all not having a kid. Amen, eh, Pastor? Amen. All right. And uh, anyways, uh, we, uh, we think about that. How real could that be? Here a promise was fulfilled. By faith, you think about uh, uh, you think about Elijah. By faith, Elijah was able to call down from heaven, call fire down from heaven, and to conquer all his enemies in one given time. By faith, I think of tonight, Paul. By faith, uh, went around uh, his uh, his little world, his Judea, his Samaritan. He went around uh, the world that God had given him, that, that was existence, that was known to him. He went around his little world three different times by faith. And uh, you know what Paul said? Read he was shipwrecked. Read he died. I mean, hey, God took care of him by faith. By faith, uh, Ruth was engrafted uh, into the kingdom of God. 
May I say tonight that by faith you and I are engrafted into the kingdom of God. Not only that we find these heroes, that they went around and, and their admirations and their discerning actions of, in their time, but they give us an illustration so that you, it will help you and I to live by faith. And I think of, uh, of all of them was when Jesus came to earth. By faith, Jesus came to live on a cross. You say, well, preacher, he did that because it was outlined uh, in God's plan. Yes, but he did it by faith. Because if you, store, uh, if you study uh, the, the uh, life of Jesus Christ, everything he did, he did it by faith in hopes that you and I would believe in him. By faith, amen? And so I think of tonight as we find that uh, uh, the, the exciting or enlightening things to our life, we find that uh, the examinations of lives uh, of men and women and we discover their interest in God and, and, and yet we can look at their methods and all of that and we can ask, well, how did God uh, work in that individual's life and he's not working in that person's life and where's God over here and where's God over there? May I say to you tonight, God is doing what he can do in your life according to your faith. And you say, well, preacher, I got faith. Well, I hope that you do. And my prayer is that I have faith as well. Uh, Pastor Mike was preaching on this morning in the book of Acts. Amen. And uh, he asked the question, uh, anybody... Uh, likes persecution, raise your hand. Boy, I tell you what, they didn't raise their hand. They sat on their hands. Amen? No one was going to raise their hand. And, uh, but by faith, I, I pray that uh, if God allows uh, us to tarry and the world begins to crucify Christians for their faith, my prayer for me and my family is that we have strong faith. Amen? You say, well, preacher, everybody has faith. Well, God gives them faith, but that doesn't mean they always practice faith. Amen? And so I think of tonight, we find uh, here in the Bible, go back with me if you will, in, in the book of John chapter 4, and I want you to see that I believe that we find a man that is, has a, a snapshot of his life, and, uh, but a man that is simply doing his best trying to have faith. Now look with me if you will. The Bible says that Jesus came out, verse 46, Jesus came out uh, again to Cain of Galilee where he made the water wine, the first miracle uh, according to the Bible. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. And when he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son for he was at the point of death. Twice your pastor tonight asked you, are there any unspoken prayer requests? And uh, well, we all know we're here, and, uh, but there were folks that uh, have a, uh, a prayer request. And I think how important it is to lift your hand up. Uh, we, we've got, we come to the point today in our church that we don't take it for granted. In other words, we say, well, well, okay, uh, you have prayer requests, then we raise your hand, everybody else have prayer requests, we make it today, and the Lord just struck us about it, but we make a point to make mention because of the live stream, and for folks that can't hear or see, uh, Miss Alice asked for prayer requests tonight. And then we, we acknowledge that, and then we go ahead. And why do we do that? Well, because uh, the importance that it brings, amen? People are important. Amen. You know, I was thinking today, uh, you know why many folks don't pass out gospel tracts? Let me tell you why. Real simple. They don't pass out gospel tracts because they have lost the importance of their own value, what Christ did for them. You know, you think about today uh, how people are important. And, I wanna, and I'm going to drive this home for you because you're not by accident here tonight. Uh, you're not 
by accident, just by chance got saved. God saved you for a purpose, amen? <laughs> God saved me for a purpose. And uh, I think of these little children here, amen? God saved them for a purpose, amen? And uh, my purpose isn't to simply uh, uh, like them. My purpose is to train them. Right? And uh, they, they, don't, they don't ask dad questions. Amen? Why? Because dad tell them straight out. Amen? Yes or no? They know that. No means no. Yes means maybe. Well, y'all don't raise kids anymore, have you? I forgot it. All right, anyways. Uh, so I want you to consider some things with me tonight. Uh, as we consider uh, uh, this uh, this story, Jesus tells them in John chapter four verse eighty four uh, verse forty eight. Uh, Jesus said unto them, "Except ye see signs and wonders, you will not believe." Let me ask you a question: Do you need signs and wonders to believe in God tonight? And you say, "Well, well, you got I got saved by faith, but." All right, if you got saved by faith, then why do you and I sometimes request for God to prove himself? Pretty sad, isn't it? Sometimes we go through life and we've served God and we've served God and we've served God. And sometimes we get to the point and say, you know what, God? I'm tired of living by faith. You, you need to prove that you're going to take care of me. Well, God don't have to prove nothing. Amen? And uh, um, uh, the, the church where we at, I, I tell them, I said, listen, don't worry about if God will keep up the doors. It's his church. Amen? Here's what I've learned in my short years of ministry. I've learned that if you just take care of God's business, he'll take care of everything else. Amen? I don't worry about the bills. And they, they had bad reports for, for me as a pastor. And they said that, uh, well, this pastor, he comes in, he spends money over hand, over hand. Amen? I spend money. Amen? Why? Because it takes money. You got to have advertisement. You got to have, uh, the, the, uh, I mean, you got to have all of this. Right? You can't have a good time, I mean, and, and without money. Amen? You can't do it. That's just the way this world's designed. Right? Well, let's be honest with one another. So, what I want you to see tonight is as we are talking about faith, faith is important. It's not just important to you and myself, but it's important to God. God, Jesus Christ, gave his life to die so that you could have faith in him. Jesus said in verse 48, except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. If you t are here tonight and you expect God to show you signs and wonders, I want to help you tonight. He won't do it. He won't do it. He won't show you his mighty power until you begin to do what you ought to be doing from the beginning. That's letting God be God and you being that saved sinner that he saved you from. When you and I just simply stop living like somebody else, it'll help us. I remember we were in Bible college and we had a, uh, a teenage uh, ministry going on. And uh, we called, we went and got these te uh, teenagers, uh, and we were sent out the bus, and we bring them in here. And some of the administrators came by, and they complained about the teenagers being uh, loud, and uh, loud. They, they were loud, weren't they, Bethany? Boy, they were mighty loud, amen? I mean, when you get 42 teenagers together, they're loud, and they're ambunctious, rambunctious, and they destructive and all of that. And they said they, they, they condemned us because what we were trying to do and, and told us, now this is, you may not believe it, but they told us that we were wrong. Well, why were we wrong? Let me help you. You can't expect a sinner to act like a saint when he's not God's child. 
And you can't, uh, you can't, you can't do it. Amen. So I mean, you know, that's where we get things mixed up. Amen. We don't take care of what's on the in, what's on the inside of the heart. Amen. We want folks to look at us like we're good and and uh, we're we're modified and we're sanctified and all that when we're dealing with some things in our heart. So you can't take care of your faith until you go to the cross and say, Lord, help me. As I look at this person in the mirror, help me to deal with that person because Pastor Boofer always said, your greatest enemy is not the preacher, it's not the deacons, amen, it's not even Satan, it's yourself. We cause more harm to ourselves than anything in God's creation, amen. And so I want you to consider, as this man, we take a snapshot of faith. What was his faith? That changed his life. I want to give you three things tonight uh, in short passing. Number one, I want you to look at me in verse 48 once again. The Bible says, uh, Then said Jesus unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, you will not believe. I want you to see it with me here tonight in ver uh, this verse. I want you to consider the first point as we're discovering faith. Uh, my topic tonight is faith delivers. The faith that God has given to you delivers. Now think about that because that's deep. Faith delivers. So according to verse 48, our first point here is faith delivers from pragmatic experiences. Now as an uneducated guy that I am, I had to look that word pragmatic up. So let me give you the definition. <clears throat> Pragmatic means dealing with things sensibly and realistically in a way that is based on practical rather than uh, theoretical considerations. Now, what does that really mean for me? Well, here is a man, his son, as the Bible says, he was about to die. And, uh, and, and so uh, he needed faith to deliver him uh, from the sensible and the realistic. I'm sure that as any of you, that when your child is sick, you'll go to the pharmacy and you'll speak to the pharmacist and get whatever you can over the over counter. Or you even go as far as, as it could possibly go and take your child to the doctor and sit in an emergency room with them, with them, amen. But here I'm sure that this man has done all of that. But according to the Bible, that his son was about to die. What do you do when you come near death? What do you do when uh, your faith is on trial? I think of tonight that as many of us uh, could consider this, that many of us are affected by the experiences of life. Now let me explain this to you tonight. We're talking about God giving us a faith deliver. Does your faith deliver you from your trials and persecutions? Or does your faith deliver you from your doubts and fears? What does your faith do for you? We're not talking about just having faith in God. Uh, but we're talking about having a faith. Having a confidence in God. That you and I can go through this life. And no matter what comes our way. Hey, God's going to be there on the other side. Let me give you this little story to uh, edify what I'm saying. Here the story is, the little sisters of the poor were going from door to door in a French city, soliciting alms for old people. One nun called at the house of a rich free thinker who said he would give a thousand francs if she would have a glass of champagne with him. It was an embarrassing situation for the nun. And she hesitated. But the hesitation was short-minded. Uh, and after uh, thinking of it, uh, a thousand francs meant many loaves of bread. A servant brought the bottle and poured a glass. And the nun bravely emptied the glass. After drinking the glass of wine... She looked at the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the rich uh, man and said, Now, sir, 
another glass, please, at the same price. Here I want you to see that this nun was willing to sacrifice her purity for a thousand francs on the welfare to help many other people. But may I say to you tonight, in the end, she didn't have enough faith to believe in God that God could take care of the poor. But yet she lost the purity of her life and she gave over and lived in that glass. You know, all it takes for you and I to take a spiral downward spin is one decision. Tonight, your decision and my decision is not going through the pragmatic experiences, not going through sensible and realistic decisions. Is church essential? Church is more than essential. This is how you stand the test of times. God's called you and I to take our place in a local Bible-believing Baptist church to have faith. Are you here tonight? You say, well, preacher, I'm here. But do you have faith? Is that faith delivering you? I love going to church. Because every time that I go to church, I, I, I go in there uh, like Kent Clark. So weak, can't do anything. But buddy, when I come out, I'm like Superman. Nothing can hold me down. Amen? Amen. See, faith will deliver you from pragmatic experiences. Number two, I want you to uh, give this to you tonight as we see in uh, verse uh, 48, verse 49. Would you read it with me? The Bible says, The nobleman said unto him, Sir, come down, ere my child die. I think of this tonight. For what this father was going through, what pain and agony watching his child die when our kids become sick, we hate for them to be sick and you can't take care of them. So I believe tonight this father not only had faith to deliver him from his pragmatic experiences, but I believe that he had faith to deliver him from his self-shame. You and I need to be awakened tonight. We can't serve God without God. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. Many of God's believers today aren't being faithful because they're trying to serve God without God. And it won't work. If you're going to have faith in God, you're going to have to go to God and get it. You can't have faith in God without go not going from God. And, and, and it's the same principle as many people trying to get into heaven without God. The old, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming unto the Father but by me. You know, it would help us tonight to say, you know what? Hey, I can't do it. God, unless you help me, I can't do it. Lord, unless you deliver me, I'm going to be stuck in this pit and I'll be here until, the, until you come back for the rapture. But God doesn't want you to be stuck in the dark in some pit. We've seen Genesis chapter 1, verse 3. God said, let there be light. God wants light on his creations. God's given you light and he's given you faith. And so tonight, I believe that we all have had our experiences and we all have had our trials in life. And we find that in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder uh, of them that diligently seek him. Believing is seeing, is it? You've heard that text, believing is seeing, amen? And, uh, but yet, uh, what do you see when you believe? And tonight, my prayer is for this church and for you as a person. We don't know every one of you, but we love people. And our heart is for God's people. Whether I know your name tonight or not, or rather you know me and, and uh, you admit how handsome I am and all of that, uh, it wouldn't matter. But to know that you are my family, to know that you are my brother, my sister, amen, uh, you're a part of what I am of Christ, amen. 
It, it, it ought to be if I see you, you see me. Amen? If, if you see me, it ought to be you see me. Why? Because that's what families are. Amen? Families are one of another. And I like how Jesus put it in the Bible. Paul put it in, in Corinthians. Amen? Some are a hand. Some are a toe. Amen? Some are a ear and all of that. Some are smelly toes. Some are nice looking toes. It, don't, it doesn't matter. But hey, a toe is a toe. Amen? A hand is a hand. Amen? And, uh, and each one of us has his purpose. Maybe you're here tonight. You're walking in your self-shame. Maybe you come to the point and say, you know what, Lord? I, I just don't know how I can go on. Oh, I, I, the pastor preached a wonderful message this morning. Lord, I'm so fearful. What's going to happen in the world? Doesn't matter. Amen? Doesn't really matter. Because after this world, you'll be in, with Christ. Amen? And so we must keep our eyes. I, I, I always remember and uh, tell folks, aren't the promises of God wonderful? Amen? We must dwell on that. And so the only way that we can get over our self-shame is having faith in the Savior. And then third of all, with me if you will, verses 51 through uh, 53. I want you to look with me here tonight. The Bible says, And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. Then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend. And they said unto him, Yesterday at the seventh hour the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in the which Jesus said unto, them, unto him, Thy son liveth, and himself believed, and his whole house... I want you to see along with me tonight that faith not only delivers us from pragmatic experiences, but faith will deliver us from our own self-shame. And then here in these verses here, verse, uh, these verses here, verses 51 through 53, faith will deliver us from future unbelief. Notice me in verse uh, 53. The Bible says, So the father knew that it was at the same hour in the which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth. And here it is. And himself believed and his whole house. You know, if you tonight have once believed by faith in the Lord and you have seen God deliver you, wouldn't it be or shouldn't it be easier the next time? Let's consider this pandemic going on. How real is it? It's no discussion. It's real. How is it, how is it, how is it real? It affects people's lives. But the reality is this. They're trying to, uh, today folks are trying to live a life as a believer without faith. And you can't do it. Faith should be able to deliver us from future unbelief. And I want you to consider this tonight, that, that the man did not receive a word of confirmation of the miracle uh, of that healing until he, at the seventh hour, it was inquired, that he realized at the seventh hour, that that seventh hour is when Jesus said, in verse 50, watch it, verse 50, the Bible says, so Jesus said unto him, go thy way, thy son live it. Tonight you and I we have an opportunity. Maybe here tonight you've struggled with your pragmatic experiences. You've allowed your experiences to come into its way. You're looking to find God uh, to where things can make sense. Stop it. Don't do it no more because that's a sin. You'll never figure God out that way. Accept him as who he is. He is the creator and he is an all powerful creator. Amen. And so he is a God that you and I can go to and we can trust him and we can put our comfort in him. And so stop trying to figure out your experiences and begin to look to God. God am I living by faith today? Stop living in self shame because self shame is what brings detriment to our own selves. When you say, well, I can't do it. I can't, you can't do it. Amen? But God can. 
Amen? And a lot of times we, we try to go to God in our self-shame and say, Well, Lord, I, I, I've tried this, I've tried that. We've tried everything but what God's told us to do, and that is to trust Him. But tonight, this is what I want to leave with you tonight. This church can never grow in unbelief. Either God can do it, or He can't. And tonight, either you believe that, or you don't. There is no in-between. There, no, uh, there is no shadow of decision. You either are believing God tonight, or you're not. And if you're not believing God, if there's one doubt, one struggle in your heart, you ought to get it right on the altar. Because that's the only place that makes the difference. Amen? You know, only time that you... Listen, folks, I know what I'm saying. I understand what I'm saying to you tonight. I'm not just preaching as a Bible message. I'm preaching to you what God's given to me. People are struggling today. And here's, you need to understand. You're either going to be a person that will make a difference in people's lives, or you're going to harm them. Amen? Me and my wife, we made a decision. We're not going to get a divorce. Amen? We're not going to get a divorce. We made that decision a long time ago. And may I say to you, we made a decision that we're going to serve God. And we do. We sometimes, I mean, let me ask you a question. How many of you went home and took a nap tonight? Now, I'm not going to look, but raise your hand. I don't want to look. All right, now put your hand down. All right? Well, we don't never get a nap. Why? Because we're looking to serve the Lord. Amen? Here's what I want you to end with you tonight, all right? Unbelief is what destroys you tonight. It's going to destroy this church. I want to say, sir, brother Bo, appreciate your music. By faith, boy, it was sounding good. Amen? Ma'am, your service, to, your, your, your presence here tonight to come here by faith, boy, it can help somebody. Amen? I like what you said this morning, Brother Lou. Amen? No one ever knew that Robert Boyce would grow up to be a pastor. Uh, tonight. I, man, I never thought about that. But I'm going to tell you right now, it's all by faith. Amen? And God doesn't tell you what it's going to be like. God shows you what it's going to be like. And you know how He does it? He does it by holding your hand. Pastor Buford said that this morning. When, when his dad said, Son, follow me. When I take a step, you take a step. Tonight, faith, it delivers. Let me ask you a question. Are you being a help to deliver people out of their unbelief? Listen, that's a challenge. We've, uh, we know we've had the same fear in our church. But you know what? Faith is real. Faith has delivered us from believing that God can't do it to believing that God can. Every head bow, every eyes closed. Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight and as the pastor takes uh, the pulpit, Lord, we ask that, Lord, you would strengthen us and we thank you, Heavenly Father, for your grace. We ask to God that you would increase our faith and help us, dear God, as we uh, turn this matter over to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. All right, I know you take notes, and I know that you'll take them home with you, and I would advise you to do that and go over them again. They'll probably mean more to you then as they did as he was actually preaching it. Now, Robert, let me just make a little point here. I'm older than you. I've been preaching a lot longer. About uh, five to ten years from now, you'll be taking that nap on Sunday afternoon. <laughs> You're so strong now. You're so powerful now. I can do it all. One of these days, you'll walk in the house and you'll say, Honey, I'm going to bed for about 15 minutes. <laughs> Amen. I, I got you. I got you. Good message. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now, one o'clock tomorrow, the folk will be gathering here for the funeral. Brother Tom Green has uh, been a friend of mine for a long time. 
and his family has been a very close friend to me. And this is very important to me that uh, this thing's handled right and correctly, and the Lord will speak to heart. The Lord will speak to hearts. There'll be people here tomorrow that's lost. Several. Pray the Lord use the, the sermon to speak to their hearts and then to give comfort uh, to those that are that are sorry. Then Wednesday we'll come right back again with another funeral. And so be praying about that also, if you will. It's so good to see you on this evening. Let's be much in prayer now as we go to our home, and let's pray that God will do a great work in our hearts. Let's stand, please, for dismissing in prayer. I want to take a chance and ask the gentleman that wandered in late tonight and is standing in the back back there, if he would, to dismiss us in prayer. And if you want to identify yourself and go up and speak to him, I'd use it with caution, but go ahead. Brother Robert, he didn't, these people here don't know him like we do. Amen? No, I'm joking. He's been a friend for a long, long time. We've bannered one another for a long time. You know, Christians can have fun with one another. Do you know that? And we do. And I thank the Lord for you, brother. Just miss us in prayer, please. Tonight, with your grace and your mercy in our life, in your precious name.